Hi, my name is Ye Hung Chen. I'm with the University of California, San Francisco, Global Health Sciences. In this video, I'll be showing you how to conduct a trend analysis using a trend calculator for Excel. This video is part of a series on analyzing behavioral surveillance data from surveys that use time location sampling or are respondent driven sampling. Trend analysis is the practice of collecting information over time and using that information to identify a pattern or a trend. In this example, we'll be using data from three respondent-driven samples of female sex workers from 2006, 2007, and 2008 to estimate the average increase or decrease in condom use during last paid sex and to assess whether the linear change is statistically significant. To conduct trend analysis, you'll need point estimates, confidence intervals, and the number of respondents for three or more survey years. You'll also need the Excel trend calculator. To start, open the Excel trend calculator. You'll be entering data into the yellow cells. First, enter the year of each survey under cycle in column B. In this example, enter 2006, 2007, and 2008. In column C, you'll enter point estimates for the percent of respondents who used a condom at last paid sex. So, for the first study year, 2006, in cell C4, type 54.7%. Next, Enter the lower and upper bounds of the 95% confidence interval into cells D4 and E4, 43.2% and 66.0%. In cell G4, enter the number of respondents without missing data for the variable of interest. In this example, 547 female sex workers responded to the question about condom use, so we'll enter 547 into the cell. We'll now repeat this process in row 5 using data from the 2007 survey, and in row 6 using data from the 2008 survey. The key results appear here in column O. The chi-squared test for trend is shown under Cochrane Armitage trend. The p-value for this test, 0 0.000, is less than 0 0.05, showing that there is a statistically significant linear trend in the adjusted prevalence. As we can see in our graph, there is an increasing linear trend. In other words, there was a statistically significant increase in condom use among this population of female sex workers from 2006 to 2008. Also note the value in cell 025. This is the average annual change in the adjusted prevalence. On average, there was an 8.1% increase per year in condom use at last paid sex among female sex workers. This statistic should only be reported when the data show a significant linear trend. In row 19, we have information on the goodness of fit test, or GOF test. This test assesses whether the pattern of the data can be sufficiently captured by a linear trend. In cell 021, we see that the p-value for this test is greater than 0.05, and therefore not statistically significant. This means the pattern of data over time is not statistically significantly different from the linear trend. We can also see this in the graph. The black line, showing the linear trend, closely matches the blue line, showing the observed data pattern. If the p-value from the GOF test is very small, and you can see in the graph that there is a considerable discrepancy between the linear trend and the observed data pattern, then you might look for nonlinear trends, such as quadratic or exponential trends. This is outside of the scope of this video. Please consult a statistician on how to assess these trends. When the intervals between surveys are not equal, the summaries and statistical tests are still valid. However, you'll need to modify the graph to reflect the unequal intervals between the surveys. This concludes our video on how to conduct a trend analysis using the Excel trend calculator.